Well, very good morning to ladies and gentlemen in the audience, members of faculty of RICS School of Built Environment. It's uh, indeed an honor and pleasure for me to be part of uh, this gathering. You know, one is used to talking to a lot of developers in media and uh, bureaucracy, but there is a special energy when one comes to talk with uh, students because uh, it is absolutely filled me with joy to see that there are so many of you, young, bright, who think real estate is a good choice, who think real estate is a good profession for you. It uh, makes me feel confident that, you know, the industry has very bright prospect when young people have started to opt for programs uh, specializing in real estate or construction management. It gives us a lot of hope that whatever are the drawbacks of our industry today, and there are many, uh, and I'm sure you all are very familiar with that, uh, we will be able to fight with them and improve the standards of our industry by and by if we have more and more educated, qualified people like yourself who join the various aspects of our industry. So it's indeed my pleasure to be here. And uh, I was given this topic by Sunil and I'll just correct Sunil's uh, story a little bit. I was actually an MBA student. I was doing my part-time program at IMI, which is at Kutub Institutional Area. And as my dissertation, I chose to do something related to housing. And I approached him. He was at Collier's... Uh, uh, yeah, correct. The, uh, the earliest version of that. And I took all that research data from him for my report. He got to know subsequently that I'm from Ashiana. So I actually have to apologize to him that it's not for any personal gain, it's really for my research. And I went to his house, he used to stay in Koshambi to say sorry to him that, you know, don't take it otherwise, I'm not going to use it for any business gains. Since then, we have been very dear friends with each other. Uh, yes, I, uh, I did work for some time with. Uh, Arthur Anderson that was in the tax practice in Bombay. Uh, this was way back almost uh, almost exactly to the 20 years back actually in Arthur Anderson. Uh, that company doesn't exist anymore if any of you who are from the tax side might know. Uh, coming to the topic at hand, I have been asked to speak on creating differentiation in real estate housing. I want to ask you that do you really think is it possible to create a differentiation in, uh, in the housing sector? Do you really think so? Can you raise hands who all think that it's possible to have a differentiated product? You think so it's possible? Okay. So majority thinks that it's not possible to differentiate. You, so the majority thinks it's a commodity? All housing products are same? Is it so? No. But I didn't see you guys raising your hand that you can differentiate it. Huh? Okay, so you raise your hand about differentiation. Can you give me an example of any company that comes to your mind you think that stands and differentiated vis-a-vis -vis the others? ADS. Sorry? ADS. ADS. Perfectly good example, yes. Why do you think that it's a differentiated company? Even if they start just selling their uh, flats and making more projects. Okay, yeah, all right. So that's an outcome of the differentiation. Great. Uh, anyone else wants to give an example? They think that uh, any company which is differentiated, Pan India, any from anywhere. Sure. Godrej Properties. Godrej Properties. Yeah. All right. Yes. Sure. That's right. So we will dwell into this. That uh, first, is it possible to differentiate? And if it is possible to differentiate, is it necessary to differentiate? If it is possible and it's necessary, how can we do it? What do we stand to gain by doing that? Every real estate company, and I'm assuming all of you as real estate professionals would aspire to be part of the sector in one way or the other. Some may take up jobs in a different capacity uh, of uh, whether in uh, construction management, real estate management, sales transaction, facility management, or uh, any such form, or uh, I'm sorry, I'm there's too much static. Can somebody take off? Some of you may aspire to start your own real estate company. Some may be part of already existing real estate uh, promoter groups. Uh, but whatever, whichever 
particular option or profession you choose to align with real estate sector. To be able to differentiate your work, you must be able to define your value proposition. What is your value proposition? You must be very, very clear. And when I say this, I don't mean a media jargon. I don't mean a line or a word which is just printed on your brochures or, or on signages uh, on your website, but you don't live that. Your value proposition must be something which is you, which is your DNA. Remember one thing, if there's one thing that I've learned by making lots of mistakes, and I think my list of mistakes is much longer than list of tiny mining achievements, is that you cannot go very different from what your core values are, whatever your own value system is. So you must be able to define what your company will stand for. Everybody says we are a trustworthy company. So you say you are a trustworthy company, but then you don't deliver your projects for 8-8 eight, eight years, you don't deliver on your specified uh, you know, commitments of specification, area, time, money, whatever. So how are you trustworthy? Just by writing trustworthy, I will not become trustworthy. Uh, the lady over there said Goldridge is a differentiated company. And I think as an industry person, there is only one reason why Goldridge is differentiated today and no other reason. There are many developers here in NCR who can beat Goldridge hands down when it comes to quality construction. Goldridge is differentiated because of trust, the brand Goldridge carries. It's a 150 year old brand. I mean, a lot of us, I don't know about a lot of you, but a lot of us, when we were growing up, an Almira meant Goldrich. You just said Goldrich, Garbe Goldrich, hai, Goldrich, Karidna, Goldrich, Vesavandu. You never said Almira or Waterloo because it was synonymous. Uh, there was a time when the locks were Goldrich. Locks, Tala was Goldrich. So, trust. That's what they're encashing today. You must define your value proposition. Your value proposition can be anything which you truly believe in. It could be for somebody luxury. If it's luxury, then your projects must be luxurious in every sense. You must believe in luxury. Probably you could be like, you have to be like Vijay Malia. Live a very luxurious lifestyle if you want to portray that you are luxury and your product is luxury. There has to be a, a synergy. If you say that your brand is honesty, there must be honesty in each and everything that you do. If you say that your brand is uh, simplicity, it must come out, your brochures, your, your behavior. You, you cannot be walking around with, you know, with 10 security guards in, uh, in a cavalcade of three cars and say that, oh, I'm a very simple man. It will not wash with your public. It will not wash with your target audience. You have to live what your value you are proposing to sell. If you look at example, you know, there are lots of global examples uh, where you take the name and the value comes to your mind instantly. I mean, uh, these are often used uh, case studies in MBA programs. You know, in automobile, when you say Volvo, what comes to mind? Right? And you can ask students across the world, what does Volvo stands for and they'll say safety. You don't need to own too many values. You have to find that one value which you truly believe in and you have to own that value. Once you start doing that, you will be able to find a niche for yourself which will be different from others. Obviously, you have to live that. You cannot, as I said, use it as a jargon. You have to live that in your work, in your deeds, in your thoughts. <laughs> Understand the power of brand. Brand is very, very, very important. Brand is because of which today Tata, Godrej, Mahindra have made massive inroad into how real estate markets and they are growing rapidly. Because they were, they are legacy brands. They were proven brand. And what is a brand? What is a brand? Brand is nothing but a set of promises which is delivered over and over again consistently. Why do you, when you want to go and buy a shoe, you probably, a, a, a running shoe or a sneaker, you probably look for a Nike or Adidas or Reebok. Why? What does it tell you? When you are buying a Nike, 
you have it in my in your mind that this particular brand is telling you that listen i'm designed for sports i'm designed for athletics i'm i'm a quality tested thing i'm promising you that your efficiency will improve if you wear it that's what that promise it conveys to you so you have to understand that your brand is not just a designer logo it's not just a fancy name it's not something which is very complicated design it is something which is simple and which conveys again and again and again and again the promise that you are delivering okay if i want to take a small example of what in my mind and in mind of my consumer ashiana brand stands for so and we have done this survey with n number of our consumers in projects uh, third party surveys that what do they think ashiana stands for in their mind and it always comes only one thing honest brand honest brand they will deliver teen saal bola teen saal mein milega jo paise bole usme milega jo saman bola usme milega nobody says it's a biggest brand or a smallest brand we don't claim to be we are neither very big nor we are nor we are the most profitable nothing but we we want to be an honest company that if anybody dealing with us at end of the day definitely should go back home with a feeling that i had a honest dealing so it's a promise of honesty which you have to live and deliver time and again times could be good it's very easy to be honest when times are good but it's even it's very hard to be honest when the times are bad but you have to live your brand you know you're married your brand you can't divorce your brand not a you know you have to go on living that brand that image that promise in everything that you do from the way you design from the way you build from the way you sell what you promise what you give as an after sales how you how your team members how you talk to your customers how you deal with them if you have told them i'll get back to you in 3 days you better get back to them in 3 days if you tell them that this is this is we are going to these 10 facilities you better offer them 11 but not 9 you have to live your honesty every day then only that brand gets formed and when that brand gets formed trust will sum as my friend from there said ats is a differentiated brand yes he is right he is talking about a consequence of the differentiation that they are able to sell when the markets are even down and you know do more projects but that's a outcome of the promise which the brand conveys that listen we will deliver to you on time a very good product the same the product that you have come to buy after 4 years you will get the same product maybe better but not poorer once that trust establishes you get differentiated so it is possible to differentiate but you have to work towards that differentiation other ways to look at differentiation any company any brand in any segment when it differentiates itself it tries to find its niche audience who is my niche what is my niche what is that small sliver of that pie which i can own better than anyone else believe me everything is very democratic so there is nothing monopolistic you will not be able to do anything which will be unique okay nobody is doing anything unique difference is only some people are doing th- those things better than the others and that's why they are able to stand out when you want to look at niche these are some of just the thoughts you know you could come up with maybe 20 more i have just put this to provoke your thought that on what lines can i differentiate my brand demographic as a company i can decide that i will make my projects only to appeal to senior citizens i can decide to do projects only to appeal to youngsters today india has got the biggest demographic dividend as we say right it's got the youngest popular young population in the world so who's the home buyer you are going to be the home buyers in 5 years down the line so if i build a brand which constantly talks to young people whatever are the dreams desires and needs of young people so my product is designed for young people my marketing communication is for young people my brand has my logos and my creatives have the colors and the visuals which appeal to young people i give facilities which appeal to young people maybe in 5 7 years 10 years i might be able to associate my brand with young brand a very good example of this was uh, is pepsi how many of you remember the youngistan ad of pepsi on television 
right? What was Pepsi trying to do? Pepsi was trying to corner the young market in India by saying that we are a young brand for young people. We are not fuddy duddy Coke. When Coke is trying to corner a happiness as a quotient, Pepsi is trying to say that we are for the youngsters. That's why when they could not sponsor the World Cup, so they said nothing official about it. Right? Because young people don't like anything official. Be it to sit for a lecture, be it to come on time, be it to submit the dissertation. We, as when we are young, we don't like official rules. So Pepsi was trying to create a niche among the youngsters. So demographic could be one, senior citizens, younger population, uh, whichever way. Value chain. I can differentiate my company on value chain. I can specialize to be a low income housing developer, catering to only say a sub 15 lakh rupee category. <coughs> there are companies today uh, and since you all are part of real estate, I, some of you might have studied, others may want to look at it. There's a company called Podar Housing out of Mumbai, uh, doing only low income housing project. There are a couple of other companies out of Pune, I forget their name, they are doing the same things. So you could be on the value chain, you could be a low income, you could be a middle income, like Ashan is a middle income, we never, we have never digressed into high income or, or as of now not into affordable or the low income. We have constantly been in the middle income space for last 28 years. Obviously the definition of middle income will keep changing as the economy becomes more prosperous. So if in 1995, my middle income definition was between 15 to 25 lakh rupees. Today that definition ranges from say about 40 lakhs to about 80 lakh rupees uh, depending upon the city and the micro market. You could be a pure luxury player. Let's say that I will only do high end luxury products. Okay, because there is market for that also. But it's important to be able to convey very clearly who you are. If you will try to be on all the three on the value chain, you will reach nowhere because your communication will not work with your audience. A low income buyer will say, Are yaar, to, bahut, it's a very richy rich brand, I don't want to look at it. A richy rich guy may say, Ki, Are yaar, the same brand is making for 20 lakh rupees also here. You know, where is my status value gone if I'm going to buy that? So, you would be knowing, right? Volkswagen, right? A Volkswagen as a brand appeals to a it's a globally, it's a middle income, you know, solid middle brand. But they own Audi also, right? Uh, Audi is owned by Volkswagen, but you will not see a Volkswagen logo on Audi because it's a, that's a target audience is separate for Audi. Okay. Similarly, Toyota owns Lexus, right? So Toyota is again a solid middle brand, but Lexus is a high end brand. Why these companies don't use the same branding? because it will confuse the buyer. It will confuse the buyers on both the sides. The high end guy will say, my value is devalued and a, and a lower uh, uh, value chain guy will feel hesitant or intimidated by going to that. So once you define what your business strategy is, stick to that. Don't have multiple lines of communication conveying the same brand ethos. Based on geography, you could be a differentiated company based on geography. You could be a only Noida centric company. You could be a only Gurgaon centric company. You could you could be a North India company. You could be a Pan India company. But you can differentiate yourself by specializing your area of operation as well. Product type. Product type. I could be a company specializing in retirement housing. I could be a company specializing in student housing. I could be a company specializing in industrial housing. There are so many cities around India, Indian metros, where you've got large conglomeration of industries. Now more so as the new government puts focus on the Make in India campaign continuously, uh, and there is DMIC, Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor, uh, and government talks about 100 smart cities and so on and so forth. You'll have lots of uh, industrial clusters coming up, where factories come up, People need homes to stay. Sometimes corporates buy for giving it to their employees after a point of time when you know companies have settled there for 5, 10, 15 years. People like to buy their own homes and start living there because they don't want to commute from the main economic center of the city to the where the factories are. 
So you could be an industrial housing player as well. You could be a warehousing player. You could decide that I will just do warehousing and uh, be a player in that. There are companies out of uh, US which would be larger than any Indian real estate company specializing in single product. Portfolio of warehouses, portfolio of retail malls, you know, portfolio of student housing. Student housing is not something which has picked up in India yet in an organized manner. In an unorganized manner, I think a lot of you might even be customers of that kind of a student housing. But if you look at examples uh, uh, in Europe and in North America, you will find that there are companies specializing in student housing, excellent facilities. So you have 500 room student housing, single, single, you know, it's like a hostel. Instead of house inside your campus, it's outside. So your university doesn't have to spend on building that infrastructure. It's available from outside. And these are companies which are listed through REIT platforms on stock exchanges in Hong Kong, in New York, and so on and so forth. Based on themes, some company can decide that I want to differentiate myself on theme basis. So my this product is a uh, theme could be architectural, theme could to do with functionality. Uh, say for example, I'm doing a project uh, in Gurgaon, which is uh, luxury sports residences. So we have actually designed the whole product, and it, it's a, it's it's a not a very large project. It's about 750 apartments, uh, gated housing complex, where we have done a sports theme. But I know there are several sports theme products in Noida as well. But it's one thing to just give a tagline, sports residences. What we did to in order to fulfill and live that differentiation of uh, sports. We have designed the entire project which has more than 12 sporting facilities available in the housing complex, available to all the buyers at no extra cost, no extra monthly recurring cost. So we tied up with Mahesh Bhupati for Tennis Academy. We have got two tennis courts there. We tied up with the Mahinder Singh Dhoni for a gym. So we have an MS Dhoni promoted gym. We have squash court, volleyball, basketball, Two swimming pools, cycling track, jogging track, golf putting green, rock climbing wall. I might be forgetting a couple of uh, more. Uh, but we, why did we put so much emphasis on that? If I wanted to differentiate my product on sports residences, and then I would just give you one basketball court or one tennis court and say hey, this is sports residences, you would say how is it different from any other housing complex? Every housing complex basically provides at least one or two of these, but we have provided twelve. To give choice to people to indulge into any of their passions related to sports. That's an attempt to differentiate on a theme basis. Now, what makes a good company? We have talked about branding, we have talked about uh, you know the ways to differentiate through the value chain of the product. Uh, but most important is consumer focus. You have to be totally dedicatedly consumer centric. You have to design your product, which means some of you will join architectural departments, some of you may take up sales related jobs, some of you may be in business development for real estate companies. A company must first study that if I want to do a project in a particular location, who is my target audience? Can I see my target audience? What is the need of my target audience? And accordingly design a product. No point in making luxury apartments 35 kilometers of Yamuna Expressway for 3000 square foot area, okay, when I know that there is going to be no taker for a product like that in that particular market. Somebody who wants to buy a 3000 square foot apartment and can spend one crore will have a lot more choice closer to the city than to go 40 kilometers or 35 kilometers away. So you have to be careful about what product you offer in which market. The product should not be designed from the point of your ego, your vanity, your aspiration. It will be only a fool who in a business environment will design a product to suit his ego, his vanity, his aspiration and then try and cocoa it onto the customers and try and find a buyer. Now I am doing this awesome thing over here, 
but now I need to find somebody who will come and buy a two crore thing or one and a half crore thing in in back of the woods. Doesn't happen. You have to be very careful to understand who is my consumer, what are the consumer's needs, what kind of demographic am I targeting, and decide your product. If I'm targeting an industrial area where I know that mostly young fellows are there with you know their small families, probably my two BHKs would be a larger requirement. I don't need to do three BHKs over there. Maybe I can even do one and a half BHK over there because if I'm doing it near an IT corridor, most of the young people they are single, they are not married, or they are just recently married. They probably don't even need two full rooms. I can do a one and a half room. But if I try to do a one and a half room in a more mature market uh, where families uh, like to buy, then it will not work. So we have to be careful in what products we are making for whom and design accordingly. Not vice versa that first let's design a product, design the price point and then go and find a buyer. Okay, this is interesting and I would like to have a bit of uh, audience participation in this. What is the biggest gap today in housing? What all you hear in media, you some of you must have had personal experiences. What is the single biggest problem today in uh, NCR's housing space? Anybody, please raise your hand and, and give your comments. Yes, please. Delivery on time. Delivery on time. Okay. Any other problem? Yes. Less facilities. Less facilities. Then what they promise? Okay. Political influence. Political influence to a certain extent. How is that a problem? Uh, I do this was just a survey that we did in, in the area of Faridabad where they were saying that, you know, this local government is influenced a lot of the uh, buying uh, characteristics of... Okay. All of these points boil down to when you dig deeper into this, on-time delivery, lack of on-time delivery, lack of uh, delivering on commitments, political influence which means that something can be promised today like here and doesn't happen for next five years government tells you a road will come and you go ahead and buy because of that road and the road doesn't come for next 10 years 15 years and you are stranded with your investment it boils down to lack of trust today in my personal opinion the single biggest factor plaguing the NCR housing market and I will limit my discussion to NCR because I think it's something which will be more relevant to most of us over here is lack of trust was it always like this no <laughs> issues have been there on and off but somehow in the last seven eight years since the industry since the market for real estate grew exponentially post 2005 six onwards we have seen lots of defaults on commitments beat on time be project never taking off commitments not being met etc etc this deficit is what gives a bad name to the industry and it's not that every single developer is same but uh, you know as they say that one rotten apple you know spoils the whole basket or, or you know one bad fish will spoil the whole uh, school it's the same thing so self-governance is extremely important we have to be very careful that whatever we are talking about we are deliver on that. We deliver on the time, we deliver on the specifications, we deliver on the facilities, we deliver as per the engineering standards. Many of you must be uh, here from engineering background as well, doing construction management. Yeah? It is very, very important that once the project execution is happening, the engineering practices is not forgotten. You know, you stop bothering about that what you studied in your school and in your engineering college uh, and you stop applying that. Because at the end of the day, it's not only important to deliver on time and deliver the right specification and uh, facility, the product must be made with the right engineering passion. Remember one thing very, very clearly if you are part of real estate sector, that is different from selling anything else. It's different from selling a car, it's different from selling white goods, it's different from selling financial products. Why? Because in the others there is no emotional attachment. You can go buy a TV today, you want to buy an LED TV, you'll go make maybe 30,000 rupees, you'll buy an LED TV. 
for 10 15 days you'll be very happy with it you know you are kicked and excited and then it's just over after that you may buy a car for first two months if somebody even if it has a minor scratch also you'll be willing to come out on the road and you know break the other guy's head you know very gaadi mein tumne kharo ke se laga di do teen mahine ke baad mein your uh, same degree of passion goes away you are not dreamt that you know your family will uh, prosper around the car you know dreamt around that your family will prosper around a tv or a washing machine right but you dream that your family will grow nurture itself and prosper in a home and that's a very big difference that's a huge amount of trust which a buyer puts into us with a we a buyer of a white goods product and we must always remember to respect that trust we must always choose our actions through that one single filter that am i breaking the trust of this guy who is putting in a lot of hard earned money who is putting in who is tying his dreams her and her dreams and hopes of her family is well being with my with this purchase and encumbering herself and himself for a 20 year loan so it's that's a big differentiator where emotions come into play and i think it's something that we all must be as part of this industry be very very respectful of and mindful of what can we do to bridge this gap this trust deficit which today plagues our industry like uh, nothing else self governance a real estate industry requires to self govern itself i can tell you on behalf of credai which i represent on the national board which is india's developers largest body we are trying very hard to inculcate a sense of self governance in our members i will not say that we are 100% successful but from where we started we have come a long way we have our own moral code of conduct which every member has to sign and adhere to if the member is found violating his membership is terminated we have started and it's beautifully working in ncr more than anywhere else we have a consumer grievances redressal forum cgrf it is like a pre arbitration platform just visit credai's website to see this thing okay it works beautifully if you are a if you have a complaint or a grievance against a developer or a member of credai you go to the website it's all pop up menu you put in your complaint you will get auto responses and every 15 days we hold a pre arbitration discussion which is not presided by the developer it's presided by a retired judge from supreme court of india or a high court of delhi along with a technical panel which has a lot of technical experts they sit in as a council where the developer's representative is present the buyer is present both the sides put their picture and then attempt is made to solve the grievance before they get into a legal issue and i am happy to tell you in last few years we have solved more than 1900 complaints in ncr itself and this we are trying to take pan india that is self governance we are trying to inculcate a sense that listen if you will not behave rightly if you will not behave in the proper ethical corporate manner you will not survive those days are gone when you were into a seller industry and you could do whatever and what has made that go actually the digital age the communication earlier if you were an aggrieved party you had no platform to vent your anger or you know your frustration you would go to the developer you can't meet him there is not 10 layers of uh, people uh, you know you can never see them media will not listen to you going what 10 15 years back today google group whatsapp group instant chat blogs i mean you know you can bring a developer down on his knees like this in 24 hours uh, and that's a fact and that is forcing i am talking about ground reality okay i am not i can tell you goody goody things but i am telling you the way things are because tomorrow you guys are part of my industry so you should know it is changing very rapidly and that's forcing developers who needed to be forced to change their behavior so and credai is doing a lot of that towards self governance now the real estate regulatory bill that the government of india is planning to bring uh, that is a very good measure there is a huge misconception that the developers are opposing it 
no single good ethical developer is opposing it. Any developer whose business model is working fine, and there are a lot of us today who are more than happy with the regulatory bill because we know it will help to eliminate fly by night and the crook developers out of the market. Or those who are whose behaviors are devious, in order to survive, they will have to change their behavior, which is good enough. If, you know, क्या कहते हैं कि वो सुबह का भूला अगर शाम को घर आ जाए तो उसको भूला नहीं कहते तो अगर किसी की प्रैक्टिस गलत है अगर वो रेगुलेटरी बिल के चक्कर में सीधा कर लेगा तो भी अच्छी बात है सो बिल इज वेरी वेलकम इट हैज इश्यूज सम थिंग्स व्हिच आर यू नो यू विल नॉट फाइंड एवरीथिंग इन एवरी लॉ दैट यू लाइक बट पॉइंट इज दैट इट्स 80% परसेंट फेयर देन इट्स अ फेयर बिल थिंग्स विल हैपन एंड आई एम श्योर बाई डिसम्बर दिस बिल विल बी इन प्लेस एंड आई थिंक दैट्स गुड बी गेम चेंजर फॉर रियल स्टेट सेक्टर इन टर्म्स ऑफ सेल्फ गवर्नेंस clean and transparent communication very very important in every project in every product you must be reading in newspapers many times and honda has recorded so many cars toyota has recorded so many cars if you have made a mistake admit it and go ahead and solve it but we find that in real estate it happens that our production cycle is a four year long cycle and when your production cycle is so long macro environment will keep changing that's the nature of the beast so you can't control everything there are things which will happen which are beyond your control but the developers shy to communicate honestly and transparently with their buyers we must take that courage to communicate properly if i think my project is going to be delayed by 6 months and i know that not on the day of the delivery i know that at least 2 years beforehand that i'll be delayed by 6 months now it's right for me to communicate to my buyer right now that listen for so and so reason we will be 6 months delayed because two years or one year before a household can plan they move to tell them three months before delivery that oh i'm so sorry these problems were there i will be now late by 6 months is unfair so transparent communication becomes very very important to build that trust with the buyer build relationship with your consumers not be transactional in nature If you are just going to do a transaction, कि मैंने तो आप bought this, I've sold this, and and that's the end of it. After that, Tata bye bye to the consumer. You will never become a differentiated company. To become a differentiated company, you have to have that approach of relationship building with your buyer, so that they keep on coming back to you for themselves, for their family, for their relatives, for their friends. Today, my company, 45% booking is referral booking. I don't have to spend one rupee on advertising, not one rupee on brokerage. Forty-five percent of my bookings happen; my customers do it for me, free of cost. Why? Because we try to invest in our relationship. Obviously, that starts by honesty, clean communication, delivery on time, delivery on commitments, and then carry forward that relationship. Invest in them. No, don't only really, you know remember them when you are uh, when you are from zero. Do things for them around the year. do events for them you know get involved with them do facility management uh, we we have your uh, uh, faculty here do facility management passionately for the product don't do it thinking that it's a it's a headache because when you're doing facility management of your own product passionately you connect with your consumer you learn a lot from them because you will make mistakes in every project however good you do but as a consumer if you're listening to them they will tell you what are the problems you can at least improve it in your next project if you are listening to them so it's very important connect with your buyer build a relationship with them it will help you in your growth cycle they will never come and complain they will never make blogs against you they will never do dharna bazi against you if they have a problem they'll come and talk to you and you can solve that and that's a right way to do that i have maintained it till now 4000 apartments out of which i have handed over after 7 years 8 years 10 years of maintaining once you know an age of project happens four complexes 18 years of facility management personally i'm just digressing a little to give an example on that uh, not a single litigation for a rupee no consumer court nothing ever because if you treat your consumer with fairness there will be no complaint because most of them are honest good people why will they go to court against you unless you are Trouble them so much that they have no other choice to do that. Okay, it is a very very important area to build that relationship. As I told you, 45% of my booking—that's a huge 
number when you turn it into figure, if I were to convert that into marketing cost, it will run into few crores every year, which I'm saving just because I'm investing maybe 50 lakh rupees a year in doing, you know, events for them, inviting them for, uh, you know, dramas, movie theater, movie plays, doing gala nights for my old customers, not for running customers. But so now Diwali is coming, so you know, ensuring that you know we send uh, greeting cards, maybe a small token gift. It's not the money behind it; it's the thought behind it. To even if I got four thousand ka piece, it goes to everybody. What does it take? One ad in the newspaper costs fifteen lakh rupees. This whole exercise in the entire year will cost more less than like two ads ka cost. But if your consumer thinks that you treat them as a relationship, he will always support. Focus on the execution. You have sold a house, an apartment. You have not sold a brochure or a video walkthrough. So execution is very important. That it happens on time, it happens as per quality, and for that it requires that as a company, as a professional, you have paramount importance given to execution, the project management. It is very, very important. Strong financial controls. Somebody mentioned about uh, not on uh, lack of on-time delivery. Only rarely it happens that there is a government order or a court order where the work is stopped for some reason. As a market as a whole, most of the time problem happens that the money has been already diverted out of the project. If a project has been sold 70%, 80%, there is no way that project cannot be completed. <coughs> unless and until funds have been diverted out of the project which is a huge problem of Indian real estate cycle because we sell in advance right it's a self-funding mechanism so once the cash flows are front loaded it's diverted into buying another land another this fancy cars fancy houses fancy holidays huh? not realizing that it's a Liability. How many of you are account students here? Huh? Where do customer advances go in the balance sheet? Right? It all it is all into your liability side. But in our working, we forget, we think it's our asset. Customer ka paisa aagya, ye to mera aagya. Let's have fun with it. No. It's a liability. It is your asset for you to do whatever you feel like it. Then live like a king if you want to or like a saint if you want to your choice but do it after you've fulfilled your liability and your obligation not before that uh, strong financial controls are very very important project cash flows must be maintained in the project and today the size of project especially in NCR many of you may join financial uh, you know aspects of real estate companies it's very important to manage the cash flows to project the cash flows and to be honest with them continuously. Otherwise, these are such large projects. For them to go out of control takes only one quarter. And then you are continuously running, trying to catch that you know, deficit that you've created in your project. Last one, I will not repeat again. I, I think I emphasize enough. Respect the trust of consumer. It's most paramount. That's when you can become a Godrej. That's when you can become an ATS. That's when you can become a, a Tatas. Because if you respect that trust, that your consumer is putting in you, he will respect you back, she will respect you back. <laughs> How much time do you have? Okay. Five, five, ten minutes, and then we can have a discussion. Right? Okay. Be service oriented. Not only look at your housing as a brick and mortar and a concrete hard product. That's the hardware. Where is the software? If you just buy this laptop, well, it won't run, right? You require great software. You may buy a great hardware. You buy a lovely smartphone, but then you say, "Ki yar, apps nahi hai yar, maza nahi hai." Right? So you know, it does not work very smoothly. That was the software quality is not good. Same thing applies here also. Bring service orientation in your thought process. Very important. What can I do to make the lifestyle of my consumer better? Every decision that you make as part of in your working, as part of your operation, please use this one filter that will this improve the lifestyle of my buyer? If it does not, don't waste your time and money on it. 
Don't do it for satisfaction of your ego. If it improves, if it adds value to the lifestyle of your consumer, then do it. What all can you do in terms of service? As I said, my mind is rusted. I could think of only these four services. I am very sure that we will see so many more coming in times to come. You know, today I see phenomenal apps coming in real estate sector doing things which uh, seemed so challenging even five years back. Uh, facility management is a must service for your residents, for, for your consumers of your product. Build a robust model around it. Don't think of it as a pain point. Think of it as an essential value proposition. Build a robust model. You will never think that it's a problem, it's a botheration. That's wrong. If you do your modeling right, if your intention is correct, if your heart is in the right place, you will be able to do that. And that's something which your consumer interacts on a daily basis, morning to evening. Complex ki safai hui ki nahi hui, bichli pani ra ra hai, nahi ra hai, all those things are there. Rental and resale service, I know many companies, uh, we don't do it yet, but I know many companies which provide rental and resale service to their buyers. So you know, if you want to put it on rent, you would probably trust your builder most because you've trusted him for a 50 lakh rupees to buy a house. If he can offer you, you know, if that company can offer you rental, you might be more happier. You could be a working professional, your house is in Noida, but you are living in Bangalore, you want to resell. If that service comes to you with trust, with integrity, without the challenges of looking outside, won't that add value to you? Interior services. When people move in, they need things, they need kitchen, they need wardrobes, they want light fittings to be put in, paint selections, blah, blah, blah. Nobody wants to live in like a, a you know, factory made product, all 500 houses are identical from inside. You will get identical from developer, but then every person, every family carves their own little you know, piece of heaven inside that. Maybe as a company or as an industry, as an ancillary, ancillary to that, you can offer you know, services of interiors. You can say that, okay, I've got four types of apartment for every apartment here, four modular choice I'm giving you. There are 16 choices overall. You can pick and choose what style you want and my product team will, will deliver that. You don't want ivory color paint, you want grip shades of gray, we'll do that. You want kitchen of not this shade, that shade, I'll do that. But you can offer that choice, suddenly your consumer feels that I am not buying into a factory made product where every kitchen, every house, every wall will look identical. Moving in services is something that we have started to do in a very small manner, we intend to expand that. Because our experience was that we carry our customer very nicely through the whole process till we give her the possession. The day they are moving in, that's the time when everybody is, is very stressed, there's anxiety levels. You know, you have left your house where you were living for 5 years, 10 years, 2 years, whatever. You know, you are on the road literally, all your things are coming in trucks. You know, your kitchen is not set up. Uh, AC fans are not working in your apartment, they are yet to be fixed. It, it, it's, a, it's a moment of great anxiety because ultimately you are getting that your dream home, you are shifting, your infrastructure is not really ready. At that moment, if we can provide some extra service to our consumers when they are moving in, I think that goes in a long way. If we tell them that when you come in, sir, this is a dedicated staff of four, labor and a supervisor, they will help you in shifting your luggage from the truck to your apartment. Okay, here is a carton of uh, drinking water and uh, you know, tea and some snacks, lunch boxes served to them. What does it cost? I think maybe. 2000 rupees for the entire thing. But imagine that how much you touch, uh, you know, you really touch the cord that you caring for them. You are not somebody who is insensitive. Okay. So stuff like that, and there could be many more as I said, you could design as a differentiator in your company. I would just like to leave you guys with this thought. Winners don't do different things. They just do things differently. By doing those things better and differently, you can easily differentiate and succeed whatever aspect or spectrum of real estate you choose to do. I will be very happy for questions or debate or discussion whatever time is permitted.